Call of Duty World War II was a return to the franchise's roots, a refreshing change to go back to the origins that was definitely welcomed with open arms given the reception of recent titles like Infinite Warfare, Black Ops 3, and Advanced Warfare. While a change up from the core components that made Call of Duty, well, Call of Duty, it was an interesting approach and many enjoyed it, but at the same point in time, many did not enjoy the break from traditional boots on the ground, high action Call of Duty. So while we're nearly four months into the lifespan of World War II and we're getting ready for potentially more DLC to come out in about a month to a month and a half. Today, I wanted to take a look at something a little bit different. I won't lie, I was absolutely blown away the last time we did a video focusing on an older title in the franchise. And that video showcasing why there was 100,000 plus players on Black Ops in 2018, that absolutely blew up and everybody seemed very interested in it. And truthfully, I wasn't expecting that at all. But what was nice was to see the interest in showcasing some of the classics in the Call of Duty franchise. So today we're gonna be taking a deep dive back into the past. In fact, nearly 10 years into the past, just shy of that decade, mark by nine months, so bring yourself to that inner peace you felt nearly 10 years ago. I'll be blasting back to my freshman year of high school feels, excited to get home and finish whatever homework that I had so I could jump into an Xbox Live party to play World at War with my friends. The follow-up to the widely successful Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Call of Duty World at War launched on November 11th, 2008. This game stuck to what the franchise knew in World War II for one final year. While Infinity Ward and Call of Duty Modern Warfare took a step away from and brought the era into a different light, World at War still focused on World War II and it'd be the last time that we saw it until, well, almost a decade later. Offering many things in terms of a fantastic campaign, fantastic secondary mode in zombies, and of course, world-class multiplayer, it is one that still stands the test of time. And when you load it up for the first time, well, that might be when the nostalgia hits you. It might not be a huge change up, or perhaps some people still actively play on last generation consoles, but booting up the console to see the classic 360 fly-in followed by the intro to the World at War main menu, well, that's enough for me to get excited to relive the classic moments. When you jump in, of course, the menus and everything of the sorts will not be changed around. That sort of stuff is always a stable constant within every single game. That sort of design didn't change from 10 years ago, but it is still refreshing to take a look at. However, in terms of just loading up the game, for those of you guys that may not have experienced it in its prime, World at War was the game alongside COD 4. It was the game at the time. Simple, tons of weaponry, classic weapons, of course, maps, streaks, the whole nine yards. It was all clean, easy to jump in and just get completely lost in. And I say this as while I play in the gameplay and the b-roll footage on a level 25 account, but I assure you, I grinded this out day in and day out before I switched over and made the current account and which was later renamed the YouTube adapted moniker that you see on screen now. Unfortunately, as you may bask in the glory of the golden days, not many people may be there with you enjoying that moment, savoring the golden days. As of this morning, gathering final B-roll footage, the peak I saw on Xbox, which accounts for both Xbox One backwards compatibility and Xbox 360 player bases, peaked at just over 1,300 players and dwindled down to a not so much lower total of 1,210 players. So it hovers around a constant for the early day totals, but still, unfortunately, it's not all that much. That doesn't, however, take away from the gameplay experience itself in every area except for one, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. From the moment you jump into a game, you may be reminded of the classic days of COD. The nostalgia really becomes real with a flashback to the best of World War II weaponry. For those wondering that haven't jumped on in a while, perhaps years maybe even, yes, the MP40 is still meta and melts. Yes, Juggernaut, Martyrdom, and Last Stand are all incredibly annoying. And yes, people still camp in the tanks instead of taking gunfights. Why you angrily mutter to yourself that they didn't deserve the dogs they got while in that tank. But while these all may be unfortunately real memories that have many irritants back in the day, it was also strangely refreshing to experience it all again, as crazy as that may sound. It was the golden age and it was what we came to love to hate. But with that said, the weaponry alone is enough to make you love the game. The MP40 with dual mags, the PPSH, the Thompson, the STG, the Browning, the Mosin you name it, there wasn't a weapon in that game that wasn't fantastic in its own right. Even down to the pistols, the Colt and the revolver, all feel and sound great. And talking about that a little bit further, given our far mocapping, graphics, and even the audio engineering, the game's weaponry is beautiful in every aspect. The audio is still, without a doubt in my mind, some of the best weapon audio in the franchise and maybe even video games overall. The weapon audio is incredibly aesthetic, and if somebody were making an ASMR video out of that, well, I'd be all for that. Maybe. 
but streak-wise, the game was simplistic and hasn't changed since, obviously, and there's surprisingly for me still that tense feeling of even though it's only seven kills, which you can get easily in pretty much any game, but perhaps that nostalgia even carries back all the way to rekindle those feelings of when I wasn't the greatest player of times and that sort of, oh man, I'm one kill off of dogs, that was a real feeling. Recon, artillery, and dogs were simple, classic, and incredibly effective as a combo. And while we wouldn't see that simple of a killstreak system return ever, and to this day, it's still one that remains to live famously throughout the franchise. Maps? Well, even this is also something that was fantastic. Maps like Dome, Airfield, Courtyard, Castle, Cliffside, Macon, Roundhouse, all fantastic every time you play them. Going back, I love each one unconditionally like I did years before, each time excited to start up a new lobby. Whether it come down to I'm simply getting old and the maps just don't cut it for me, or whatever it may be, I just feel like in recent titles, there's been a struggle to capture the intense awe in each map. Maybe some standing out here and there, but sometimes maybe none of them stand out. But with World of War, even nearly 10 years later, each map I still got excited to play on. One thing you'll definitely notice though if you hop onto World at War in 2018 is the servers though. A lot of the times the server connection is still very much so atrocious, but that's to be expected now, especially with a dwindling player count. Peer-to-peer -peer connections to begin with weren't anything that were fantastic simply because host advantage was, was actually a real thing. You had to connect to an actual player, not a dedicated neutral server. So if you had become either relatively acclimated or even fully acclimated to hybrid and dedicated server systems within Call of Duty or even other games, you might forget how much of a struggle that it used to be to play games on peer-to-peer -peer connection, World at War being a fantastic example of that, and especially when things would happen in which the game would end because either the host would leave or the connection itself couldn't sustain to the host and the game would just have to end. That's been a little bit more amplified now with a dwindling player base. Because there are a much smaller core of players to connect to, that distance between players becomes greater potentially, and therefore that peer-to-peer -peer connection becomes even weaker. So the one bar, two bar might be a real thing for you if you hop on and try this out in 2018. And unfortunately, that's just how it's going to be, it seems like, moving forward. When a game is nearly 10 years old, it's not going to get the same server recognition that a title like World War II would, because, well, the numbers just aren't there. Perhaps if this video manages to pull an insane amount of players on, well, maybe it becomes a little better because you have more people to connect to around the world, but for the time being, servers are still not the greatest. As for another thing you might run into in 2018 is, well, hackers and modders. Because while you might be on Xbox One playing it on backwards compatibility, and that's a very viable way to do it, I personally have recorded all the footage on Xbox One backwards compatibility that you're watching now, a lot of people are still on those Xbox 360s and PlayStation 3s, to which the firmware compared to today's current generation of consoles was a lot easier to modify. So therefore, you'd end up coming into, say, people with 11th Prestige or God Mode, sometimes Aimbot, and while I didn't run into any of that here recording earlier in the day, it is something that as of recently, going back to maybe say a couple of months ago even, I did run into quite a few of them back then. So while they might not be there in the necessary moments of when I recorded this footage, they still very well could be there if you jump on. So bear that in mind, but they are still around in 2018 as they were back in the day. Overall though, World at War is still a fantastic title. If you guys jump on, you'll love it, I think. And of course, if you loved it back in the day, it feels like home almost. Though, of course, while 2018 might not have the numbers to support a much better experience in terms of maybe connection, it is still a ton of fun if you have some time to burn and you want to try something out a little bit different, if you want to go back to the original days of World War II combat within the Call of Duty franchise. Call of Duty World War II has a fantastic air about it, yes, but this is once again that classic. For me, the first title that I picked up at launch, and thus one that has a very special place in my heart. So. I was very excited to jump on and play this a little bit for a little bit of the afternoon, and I had a lot of fun. So if you guys jump on, I think you guys definitely will as well. But one thing that I want to leave you guys on is the topic and the discussion of a remaster. A lot of people seem to jump on the idea that because we had Modern Warfare remastered, we'll be getting remasters moving forward. While of course it is a nice thought, I wouldn't expect World at War to be remastered. I'll say that right up front. I just don't think that there is enough of a reason to remaster it. There were a lot of different factors that went into why Modern Warfare was remastered, and we won't go into the full scope and spectrum of those, but it goes a lot deeper than just people wanting it for the last couple of years. And while it is something that, of course, would be nice to see, there also are limitations in the fact that, well, it is backwards compatible. You can jump on and play this for free on a current generation console already. So, therefore, by remastering it, you not only sort of alienate an already established group of players that may be loyal to the original, but you'd also be making a game that people would have to pay for, but they could get originally for free 
if they had the disc from a decade ago. So unfortunately, while it would be fantastic to see, I wouldn't expect it any time coming up in the near future. So while you have the opportunity on backwards compatibility per se, or if you still have a PlayStation 3 hidden away if you're on the PlayStation end, or if you wanna hop on and get it for Steam for I believe like $20, it is something that is definitely well worth the opportunity and jumping on for a couple hours to play if you have some time to burn. Once again, it is a classic and still to this day remains a very enjoyable experience. So that's where we're gonna wrap it up. Want to give you guys a little bit of a rundown here. Again, I was really blown away by the Black Ops video talking a little bit about that in 2018. So I figured, you know what? Let's do a little bit of a follow up here. Let's go back a little bit further to what is now almost a decade old and the last time that we saw a World War II title within the franchise. I thought it'd be a fun little experiment to play around with and see what it would be like and give you guys a little bit of a heads up that, well, it's definitely still worth going on and trying out for yourselves. So all that said, I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. Did you guys play World of War in its prime? Did you guys ever hop on as of recently and try it out again? And if so, did you love it like you used to? Did you hate it? Whatever it may be, feel free to let me know down there in the comment section down below. And of course, if you guys have not done so in a while, I definitely recommend giving it a shot, trying it out and jumping on for yourselves because I think you will definitely enjoy it. I'd love to see some revitalized player bases to this game and maybe the community here on the channel can do a little bit of that. Bring those numbers up by everyone Ever so slightly perhaps and maybe give a little bit more of a revitalization to a classic title so that said hopefully you guys enjoyed if you guys did make sure you drop a like down below and of course if you guys are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding call of duty if you guys want to see more stuff like this sort of a retrospective look at some of the past titles in the franchise i'd love to do more of these so if you guys want to see more i'm all on board and we can do more of these moving forward so of course, let me know down there in the comment section, but if you guys are interested in any of that as well, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing, and as well, best class setups, tips, tricks, news, information, all that good stuff for Call of Duty World War II, the current title. If you guys want to follow me over on Twitter to get connected with a little bit more, practically live on Twitter, so if you guys want to shake up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram, I'm trying to get a little bit more active over there, but if you guys are interested in that, that link is as well in the description below. But with all that said and out of the way, thank you guys all so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Why does that espresso? Take care and peace.